Hey there. Did you miss me? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are looking at an absolutely insane tactic. It is a two. 5-3 strikerless with two Segundo Volantes, two ball playing defenders, inverted wingbacks push right up, wingers on attack. It is wild. This one is different. This one is unique. How is it going to go? Let's find out right bloody now. Welcome back to FM Base. My name is Charlie and today, as I said, we're going to be looking at another new wild tactic. This one is definitely the most out there one that I have looked at on this year's game. I did do a video a couple weeks ago about the weirdest tactic on FM. I think this one has to top it. Uh, we're back again on the FM base website and there has been a bunch more tactics tested. So if you haven't had your tactic tested yet, go over on to FM base and upload your tactic up in the top right here. We're going to be looking at this one uploaded by Hill Muth. We've looked at a few of their tactics before, but today we're looking at the Red Baron's zigzag. It is a weird one. I'll say that for free. Before we get any further though, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please do so. We're about 50 subs away from reaching 3k and I'd love to get there before FM22 drops. So if you haven't subscribed yet, feel free to do so now. And also leave a like on today's video. Be greatly appreciated. So here are the stats from the FM base tactic test. It's 58.13% win percentage overall. Uh, Subtop was a 70% win percentage. Underdog was a 46.25. So very standard, amazing stats for a top six. A tactic on this website. In the credit notes, we have posting my latest tactical exploration that has shown some promising results. Repeatedly scored 200 plus goals in my test with great distribution of goals. Very hard for the opposition to keep you from scoring as a result. If you are very much underdog team, I'd recommend dropping the inverted wingbacks for additional safety with obviously a trade-off on the offensive firepower. I would also recommend shifting the mentality down to at least positive in those situations. So you'd love to see that, a bit of instructions if you're not a super strong team. This one is wild, let's jump into the game and have a closer look at it. So here it is in game, the Red Baron's zigzag. It is a weird looking one. I do like the like nice little shape that it makes. It almost looks like a little butterfly or something. But yes, with that being said, as always, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the tactics, show you all the roles, instructions, and positions. If you do want to recreate this one yourself, this one I maybe wouldn't use myself personally because it is a bit wild and out there. But if you're looking for something to experiment with, this one could be good for you. But as always, the download link will be at the bottom of the description if you are unable to download it. You can recreate it from this video. So yeah, we're going to start off by running through all the player roles and instructions and the additional player instructions. So we got an attacking midfielder on attack in the middle. We then got a winger on the left-hand side and also a winger on the right-hand side. Uh, we'll then go from the inverted wing back on the left-hand side and the one on the right-hand side, both of them on support with the same instructions. Uh, then we got the Segundo Volante on the left and on the right-hand side and then a DLP on defend in the middle and then our two ball playing defenders with exactly the same instructions and then finally a sweeper keeper. I think I'm most excited to have a look at some of the games and how this tactic actually plays in game because this is definitely a wild one. The results I got from it are pretty decent uh, so we'll see how it plays in game. In terms of team instructions it's actually probably the simplest team instructions I have seen um, on a tactic so far. We've got a custom tactical style with an attacking mentality in possession, we are playing out of defense. We are also hitting low crosses and working ball into box. Everything else is standard. Uh, then in transition, we are counter pressing and countering with roll it out as a distribution type. And then finally out of possession, we got offside trap on, much higher line of engagement with a standard defensive line. Um, extremely urgent pressing and prevent short goalkeeper distribution is also selected. So the main thing I love about this tactic so far is that it is different than anything I've seen. I do look at a lot of different tactics and you see basically the same instructions throughout most of them and it's the same kind of formations. If you do go have a look at the top like 20 on FM base, there are a lot of the same things. So it is good to see something with a bit of variation and a bit of difference, especially something that performs so well. Let's jump into some games and have a look at how this tactic does perform in game. Let's see how Manchester City went with this tactic against Aston Villa. They won this game. 4-0, uh, Phil Foden playing in that attacking midfielder role. It's interesting to see a lot of the goals coming from the wide areas. So let's see how they came about. So the first highlight here, ball coming out to Kevin De Bruyne into Rodrigo. Then Ilkay Gundogan just playing it over the top to Riyad Mahrez, who is actually very far forward uh, from that left wing position and is able to slot it in behind. 
And now again, Ilkay Gondolin back to De Bruyne, back to Gundogan. And then Rodrigo in behind to Ferran Torres, another one of those wingers, and is able to slot it in behind. John Stones in the ball. De Bruyne, Foden playing in to Ferran Torres, and he is able to get his brace in this game. And then finally comes out to Carl Walker, who crosses it in, and someone's going to be able to follow this in. Ferran Torres back to Jao Cancelo and shoots from the edge of the box, and the inverted wing back coming in as that midfielder on the edge of the box is able to score for them. So this just kind of feels like one of those game-breaking tactics uh, where having no strikers really confuses the opposition. And those wingers are really able to get in behind, uh, crowding the midfield, able to really confuse the defense edge in this game and get uh, some goals. Another team we looked at was actually Porto in Portugal. Uh, so let's see how they got on with this tactic. They won 3-0 in this game. So first goal, Marcano playing it into Mbemba, and then Wendell plays it over the top into Bruno Costa, and he's going to be able to slot it behind uh, the keeper into the goal, of course, that's where he's going to slot it. Um, and then second one, Wendell playing that inverted wingback role, coming very centrally here, and he's going to play it to one. Yeah, the, you can see there, interestingly, I think we're about to go again. The thing I want to highlight is there was like three or four options running in behind there and coming from deep that they were able to pass it to. So yeah, if we look at the second highlight from 2D, you can see here Wendell comes centrally. And then there is one, two, three, four options that are going to try and get behind, in behind their defense here. All coming from deep, confusing the hell out of the defense. And then you can see here there was the ball on um, to go in behind where they did go to Sergio. Oh, there was another ball into Pepe here, or even if they needed to, go all the cross over to here to Jao Mario, and he'll be able to follow it in. But Sergio gets a ball, and he's able to slot it in behind. So yeah, some decent highlights there. We're now going to look at a little test that I do with all these tactics, where I simulate a full season, plug and play with this tactic with a few different teams in on, of different levels and different leagues to see how they get on. Of course, I looked at Manchester City and Norwich in England, and I also looked at. Uh, Porto and Tondela in Portugal to see how they got on uh, with this tactic. So let's have a quick look at their seasonal results and see how they got on with this one. So we're going to start in the Premier League and you can see that Manchester City finished on 87 points, one point away from the title. It was Manchester United's title. I should also mention I am using an updated database, uh, the FMI update one, which is fantastic. Um, so it is a little bit different. Um, of course, Norwich are in the Premier League in this save. And Norwich finishing in 17th place, so a pretty poor result uh, for Norwich finishing down in 17th. But they did stay up four points clear on the, of the drop zone. They were predicted to get relegated in uh, the preseason predictions, so it's good to see that they did, in fact, uh, outplay that and did stay up. So let's just have a quick look at Manchester City and see how they did individually. Uh, of course, finishing second, knocked out in the Champions League by Manchester United in the semi-final. Did they win the Champions League? They did not. They lost to PSG in the final. That would be a fantastic final in real life. Uh, FA Cup, Fulham knocked them out in the fourth round and Liverpool knocked them out in the Carabao Cup. So absolutely nothing this season for Manchester City. In terms of goals, they're credited to say that they do get shared across the whole team. So we'll see how that went throughout the team in terms of goals. Raheem Sterling scoring 23, 17 for De Bruyne, 13 for John Stones, Foden scoring 10, 9 for Gundogan, uh, Silva and Ake and Rodri with 7. Fernandinho with 6, 5 for Ferran Torres, 5 for Mares, 5 for Grealish. So yeah, did really get spread out throughout the whole team. They did also score the most goals in the Premier League out of any team with this tactic. Um, 16 assists for both De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva as well. In terms of Norwich, unsurprisingly, knocked out of both cups. Both by Manchester United got some rough draws in both of them. They did get to the quarterfinal of the Carabao Cup. But yeah, knocked out by Manchester United in that one. In terms of their goals, they got 13 for Cantwell, 13 for Dowell. Uh, Dermich was not at the club, so we'll get rid of him. And then... Uh... Palacetta <laughs> scored six, Kenny McLean scored six, Zola scored six. The goals definitely shared amongst this team as well, but not as many goals as Manchester City. We'll see how many they did score. They did score 101 goals throughout the season. Norwich actually scoring the eighth most goals in the league with 53. Um, in terms of defensively, Man City were the best defensively in terms of conceded. Uh, Norwich were all the way down. They had the worst defensive record with 82 goals conceded throughout the season. So that's really what undid Norwich. And it does seem like you do have to be a very, very uh, good attackingly versed team to do well with this tactic. 
And also, as the creator says, if he was using this tactic, he would bring it, the inverted wingbacks down um, and also play positive if he was an underdog. So that's probably something that Norwich could have done. But yeah, of course, these tests are just done plug and play. So unable to see how that would have gone on. But let's jump over to Portugal and have a look at Porto and Tondela. So Porto did, in fact, win the league by 14 points with this tactic. And Tondela surprising everyone, finishing in fourth place. Uh, they did have the league's top goal scorer in their team as well. Tondela were predicted to finish down in 11th in mid-table, and they did do quite a bit better than that, finishing up in 4th place on 65 points. High, above Benfica as well, which is interesting to see. And in terms of other competitions, uh, Porto won the league. They also won the Portuguese Cup and the Taca de Liga and also the Portuguese Super Cup. So they did win a quadruple with this tactic. I don't know if you can really count that as a quadruple. A Portuguese quadruple. I don't even know what the Taca de, Li de Liga is. I'm guessing it's just... Yeah, it's just... It's just a one-off game against Rio Ave. And the Portuguese Super Cup is also just a one-off game against Benfica in this season. So, um, it's not really quadruple. Will I title this quadruple winning tactic? Probably not. But regardless, pretty good season for Porto with the four trophies. Um, in terms of goal spread from their team, I'm assuming it's pretty similar to the other teams. Yeah, they got a bunch of t players over 10 goals. Uh, Fabio Vieira with 17. Sergio Oliveira with 16. 14 for Luis Diaz. And uh, 11 for Pepe, who actually played 41 games throughout the season with, at age 38, playing 41 games throughout the season. And he was always also their highest average rating throughout the season as well, which is fantastic. What a season from Pepe. And then Tondela, of course, getting knocked out in all those other competitions because Porto won them. So, of course, they didn't win them. Um, but they were actually sitting up in second for a lot of the season. They had a pretty um, bad slump at the end of the year and finishing off... Uh, in that fourth place, but they were second for a long time throughout the year. And in terms of their goals, 22 for Barbosa, uh, Murillo scoring 17, 9 for Tavares, and 9 for Augusto as well, and Eduardo Quaresma scoring 6 for them as well. So yeah, a very successful tactic for uh, Tondela in this save. Interesting to see that they finished fourth. Um, if we look at uh, if we look at the league as a whole, Port with the most goals throughout the year with 89 and Tondela was second with 72. Uh, in terms of conceded, uh, Porto were only conceded 17 goals throughout the season so they were top as well. Uh, Tondela down in ninth with 51 conceded. So a much better result than the Norwich result with Tondela. But they did still concede quite a few goals with this tactic. So yeah guys, that is Red Baron's zigzag. An absolute weird, different, unusual tactic to look at today. Thought it'd be interesting to look at something like that. Um, as always, if you did enjoy this one, feel free to leave a like and subscribe down below. And yeah, get your tactics into FM Base because I'm still going to be looking at a few more uh, at the end of the game life. And if there's any other videos and whatnot that you want to see on this channel, feel free to let me know down below. And I'll see you a lot in the next FM Base video very, very shortly. Bye-bye. <laughs>